All right, guys. You guys have been uh, working a little bit with business letters in mod three. There, I want to take a uh, a little extra time today and talk about first off some uses of business letters. So, with your partner or partners there, take just a minute or two. And I want you to list on the Venn diagram here. What are some possible uses for a business letter? So, on the left side, this would be written from a business. So, let's say you're working for a business or a business sending it to you. On the right side, it could be personal use for you sending to, to a business probably. And then in the middle, there would be ones that could be both, okay, to where be whatever constant. So, think about maybe letters you've gotten in the mail, letters that you've had to send or had to send or you might be sending uh, sometime soon, okay. So, just take a minute and I want you to jot them down there on, on the Venn diagram. Uses for a business letter. About the, you can even think about the school as kind of a business. Some of you have gotten those dreaded letters in the mail, I bet. Pardon me? That's what, that's what I'm asking. That's what, so you're getting a letter from correspondence from a business or you sitting to a business. Why would you, you send a letter to a business possibly? Why would a business send a letter to you? Or could be business to business. <laughs> Drew, what do you got there, man? Let's turn that off. reasons that you might see a business letter used. What do you guys come up with? So much stuff written down. Okay, from which one? So personal there, okay, so a complaint. Could possibly be in the middle boat there. Or a report card. Okay, so you guys a report card. So I'll just put some type of report. Okay. Okay, informational purposes, right? Sometimes we get those mailers from a business sent to you. You could be trying to gather some information. Okay, good. Do you get an award or achievement? Which one? Either uh, or? That would probably be for business. For business, okay. Sending to somebody? Yeah. An award? Any others? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple more here. Uh, but don't warn me of customer appreciation or got that. A thank you letter. We don't write enough of those. Okay? That's actually something uh, I think is, is a life kind of lesson. You know, we tend to always complain and we set some stuff there, sort of complaint type stuff. We don't tell people they're doing a good job enough. Okay? Usually when somebody's doing a good job, we just sort of take it for granted. Um, so it's, it's never a bad idea to, to do that. Um, what about trying to get a, a, a job? Or, pardon me? I say so. uh, a business inquiry. I'm trying to find out some info for more information that could maybe be the information there that we said. Um, debt collection. This is never a good one. It could be possibly for both. Okay, whether you're talking to maybe a business so you some money for a refund or uh, worse than that, you owe them some money and they're trying to collect from that. Yeah, I think that's right. Plank could be both here. Um, big one for the application letter. Okay, you want a job, okay, or possibly for you guys coming up soon, um, a scholarship type letter, or 
um, for trying to get into school. Okay. One more for personal. Maybe you ordered a product and it wasn't the right thing. Okay, so you're going to return it. Because a lot of times, why is it a good idea, do you think, to use written correspondence? So we talk about, you know, we can call somebody on the phone, but oftentimes in business dealings, okay, um, you need to really have some written correspondence. Why is that? Yeah, it's a permanent record, right? Where if, I, if you make a phone call, unless it's been recorded, whatever, there's always that argument that, oh, it didn't happen. Okay, this is at least trying to create some type of permanent record of it. Okay, good. Pardon me? Survey. Yeah, we can put a survey on there also. Okay, good. Now, before we get into to writing there, let's talk a little bit about the important, some important aspects of writing business letters. Okay? Number one, guys, you want to make sure you use a professional format. Okay? And you use, I had a couple examples you've worked on in Mod 3 there. Uh, there's all kinds of different options that you can possibly use as acceptable types of business letters. Okay? The one that, that I like and we use in here is called block format open punctuation. We'll talk a little bit more of that in a minute, but that's a very specific, it's a very simple, uh, very clean uh, business uh, letter format. Okay? You also want to make sure that it's professionally written. Okay? Uh, typically, it may not necessarily be three paragraphs long, but it's in the body of your letter, you're going to have an introduction. Why are you writing the letter? Okay? You're going to have a message. You know whatever the the message is you're sending, okay, and then a conclusion at the end of you know kind of concluding why you uh, uh, why you wrote the letter to begin with, okay, and you're gonna you're gonna write a letter here at the end of this um, assignment, okay, and maybe the biggest one of all three of these, and they all three are important, is that it is error free, okay, any errors that you that you uh, make there and send that out, what's that kind of look like? What's it make you look like? Unprofessional, right? Okay, you're unprofessional, you didn't care enough to proofread. I'll tell you a story from years ago when I was coaching baseball here. And uh, the president of, a, of our booster club, um, booster club had all kinds of field improvements and stuff around the facility that, that they wanted to do, they were raising money for. It. The president of the booster club sent a letter to the principal just outlining those things. Here are the you know six, eight things, where it was, that we're raising money we want to try to improve. Uh, the principal actually calls me down and he's like, I got this letter. He goes, you've got to look at it. He goes, the message, I understand, it's great. He goes, but look at this letter. It was filled with typos. All kinds of spelling errors, grammatical errors. I mean, it was very, very poorly written. He's like, man, he goes, this is even hard for me to read. Okay? So it did not give, a very, give off a very good impression of our booster club and what the booster club was trying to do. It didn't look very professional. And that's super, super important. Uh, if you're writing a letter of application and trying to get a job and you have have typos in that letter, you going to get that job? Probably not, okay? Almost guaranteed not. And so that, I cannot emphasize this enough, um, and this is something I think we get a little bit careless with today. You guys, and I'm kind of guilty of this myself, um, you know, I used to consider myself a great speller, okay? And then, because now everything, we have auto, we have autocorrect, you know, using with word processors, even sometimes with texting, that kind of stuff, that get away from thinking about it. You also have your text language, okay, you got to learn to separate your your uh, informal language from your formal professional language, okay, and that can be tough because sometimes we use the informal a lot more. So make sure that it's professional and it's air-free. All right, go ahead and open up um, Microsoft Word. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through um, this business letter, the example that I gave you. Okay, we're going to walk through that kind of together. You're going to actually key it in, but I'm going to go through the different parts and the formatting of that um, as we go. Give everybody a second to get logged on. Mine's going to be a little bit different with the setup of it, um, how this is set up, but one thing that, that uh, I do want to emphasize with you guys is that you use the show hide button, okay? So click on the home group there if you haven't, and click the paragraph symbol, okay, the show hide button. 
Now, I know that's a little bit annoying. It puts all those symbols on the on the screen there. And sometimes people are like, what are those things? And they get, you know, they're annoying either way. What these are, guys, they, these are called non-printing characters. So anywhere that you hit the tab key, you hit the space bar, you hit the enter key, okay, you are going to see a mark on the screen. And when it comes to formatting and setting up something like a letter, uh, to me, these can be very, very beneficial because they're going to show you that. Now, make sure that you have your line spacing set to single, okay, to start off. And you don't have any space after the paragraph. Okay, so it's all, there's no extra spacing that's put in there. So, first off, open punctuation and block format open punctuation. Very simple. Block format means every single line starts at the left margin. Okay? There's no, no indentions for paragraphs. Uh, we're not spacing the date or the, the uh, inside or the return address over if we have that included. Everything starts at the left margin. Makes it very, very simple. Open punctuation means, doesn't mean we don't use punctuation marks, it just means after the salutation, the dear, dear to whom we may concern, and after the closing, like sincerely, we do not put it any punctuation. Okay, there's no colon, there's no comma, there's nothing, there's no type of punctuation after that. So it's a very clean, very, very simple type format. Okay? Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to center this vertically. Okay? So if you don't remember, go to the layout tab, okay? Um, go to page, page setup, click on the layout tab, click on the page setup. Then find vertical alignment and change that to center. So basically what's going to happen as we type, our letter is going to move up and down equally so it's kind of centered on the page. Okay. Now, oftentimes, depending on what we're doing here, if we are typing a personal business letter okay, from you to a business, you probably don't have your own personal letterhead. Okay. As you saw, in, as you see in mod 3, um, and if you're working for a business, for the school, whatever, when you get a letter from the school, what's at the top of that letter? Does it have, do they have typed in as part of the letter, like the school address and everything? Have I seen what, what a school letter looks like? What's at the top of the paper? Do what? Have I seen one? Well, it's on what's called letterhead. So the, on printed paper or as part of that paper, not what they've actually typed in. Okay, it'll have the school's name, Eureka High School. It'll have the address, phone number. Uh, probably has uh, Mr. Crowler's name up there. It's the principal. Depending on who it comes from, it could have somebody else also. Um, usually it's in blue, or at least part of that's in blue ink. That's what our school, our district color is. Uh, so it gives you all that information. The reason businesses do that, then you don't have to worry about typing it in, and you've got to kind of a nice, use there some pictures and nice fancy look, okay? In our case, for this one, we're going to say it's a personal business letter, okay? So it's not typed in letter. So type this in as we go. So, and you're going to type it just how it is on the paper for this one, okay? So you've got the sender street address. So when you type it in, you, put, you would put your own personal, uh, not for this assignment, okay? You're going to type what's on the paper, but if you were typing this real, you would put your address, okay? Little things that I see, guys. When you type an address in, usually they start with a number, right? Okay, so 4525 is the school street number. Okay, so it would be 4525 Highway 109. Highway is going to be capitalized. Okay, so the, those proper names in your street should be capitalized. So let's go ahead and type this in. Okay, so start typing in the sender street address, where it says sender street address. Okay, city, state, zip, and the current date. Okay. Those things are all going to be single spaced, so you just press enter one time after uh, after the end of the line. City, state, zip code, obviously city capitalized, the comma, the state, you can use a brief two letter abbreviation, MO, they're both capital, there's no period afterwards, okay, those are other little things I see, uh, common mistakes I see, and then the zip code, and then the current date. Okay, if you type this on letterhead, the first part of the letter would be the date. Okay, and that date is always spelled out. Okay, we don't put on a, in a business letter, we're not going to put um, 11, what's the date, 31st, 11, 31, 16, or 30, is it 30? 11, 30, 16, you're going to put, um, 
you know, November, spelling out November 30, comma, 2016. Okay. After the date, then, we're going to quadruple space. So what that means, quadruple space, we're going to press enter four times. So if I'm on this line here where the date's at, one, two, three, four. Okay. It's actually going to leave three blank lines. If you got your show hide button selected there, like I said, you'll see three paragraph marks over there on the left, okay, that don't have anything next to them. Then we would type the inside address. This is who the letter is going to. Typically, if you know that, well, if you know the person's name, you're going to put the person's name and title, okay. Then you're going to put the company name because this is going to a business. Then same thing, street, address, city, state, zip code. Again, if you did not set your line spacing to single or turn off the spacing after the, or before the paragraph, um, you've, got some, you've got a problem. I see some of those. If, if those lines are not right next to each other, if there's space in between those, those blank lines, okay, you need to go back and correct that. Check your spacing before and after, guys. Some of you, that's where problems will come in. But you're right, you're good. See the spacing. It's not correct. You need to turn it off. Maybe I'm missing my third. Select it, so it'll be select. Okay, so by following, it looks like most of you are getting there now where you, Jake, you got, you got spacing set. By default, the believe is set for five points of space after each line, every time you press enter. So if you can see a little bit of blank space between those, uh, those paragraph symbols, you need to change that. Go to, go to the paragraph dialog box and take that spacing after, set it to zero. All right, so after we got our inside address, so it's two, we press enter twice, so we leave a one blank line. We're going to type our citation. It would be dear in the person's name. If we know the name, it could be to whom it may concern if we don't know their name. Okay? Remember, it's open punctuation, so there's no punctuation after that citation. We press enter twice again. So we've got a blank line before and a blank line after. So since we're not indenting anything, okay, the way we set apart the different parts of the letter is with spacing. The way we set apart the paragraphs of the letter is with spacing. So we leave a blank line to separate them versus um, indenting. Okay. Should be one blank line before the citation, one blank line after. And then go ahead and type the body of the letter. And for these purposes, I want you just to type the first uh, actually, let's type the first paragraph and the last paragraph. So remember, the body of the letter, typically, it's going to start with an introduction, okay, kind of why you are writing the letter. It gives a brief kind of overview. Then the middle paragraph or two is going to be um, a lot more details, okay, what you're doing exactly, what you want what you need, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end, you're going to have a concluding paragraph, kind of in conclusion, again, what you were wanting to accomplish, how they can contact you if, if necessary, et cetera.
Okay, I've seen several people that need to center their letter vertically on the page. You need to go to the, uh, the page setup dialog box, choose layout, and then vertical alignment, change it to center. If you're, right now, if you're typing and you're up toward the top of the page, you need to do that. Sure, you need to center it vertical. You need to select it all. So you're doing it. Select the whole thing. Double, triple, triple. That's fine. There you go. Now you can do that. Now I'll put center vertical. So we're going to put the setup over here. Put the layout tab at the top. The menu of the group. Stuff in red, you are not typing. Just the, the black ink is all you're typing. The red is the, the direction of something. See the body there of the, of the letter is single space. There's a double space in between uh, in between the paragraph to set them apart. Getting close here, most of you. And actually, where it says sender's name, kind of in uh, a fancy font at the bottom, don't type that either.
Both soil sites are done the second paragraph or at least in it. So they're in that second paragraph. Just put a period wherever you're at. I don't care if you're at the end of the sentence or not. Okay, you see that get the point there of spacing in between. Now, the bottom of the letter, at the end of the letter, so I'm done typing the body of my letter. I'm going to double space, so I leave one blank line. <clears throat> there's one blank line to separate. And I'm going to type the closing. In this case, it's sincerely. It, there's lots of other options. It could be thank you, all kinds of stuff. It could be sincerely is pretty common. Okay, no punctuation after sincerely. It's open punctuation. Then we're going to quadruple space. So at, at the end of sincerely, one, two, three, four. Press in. Okay. This is where it says sender's name on here. That's that's where we're going to actually. If you're writing the letter, you're going to sign it personally. Okay, you're going to handwrite it. Okay. Then we're going to type the sender's name. So it would be your name and your title. Okay. If you have one. Sometimes it could just be if it's more personal. You won't have it. And put an actual title on there. But you type your name, how you're going to sign it right above that. Okay. Again, we sign it. Why do we sign the letter, do you think? Notification. Okay. Notification gives a little more personal touch, right? That we actually, you know, especially if you're, um, if this is a business, is um, Dr. Crowlers, if he sends a letter home to parents, did he sit down and actually type that letter? No, he told his secretary what he wanted her to say, and she typed it out. He, he approved it, whatever, but it's still his message, right? So it would say his name here, okay, but he didn't actually type this out. He signs it, gives a little more personal touch. Now, after the sender's name, there are some what we call optional parts, okay? These are not going to be included on all business letters, okay? But they can be included, and they're all separated by a double space. Okay, so if somebody besides the person who is sending the letter, so I, the example I gave, Dr. Crowlers, he uh, he's you know composed this letter, it's written out, but his secretary, Miss Adams, is the one that uh, that typed it out. She would actually put her, her initials at the bottom of this letter. Okay, they're called reference initials. They're all lowercase, no periods or anything. This would be K A for her. Okay. The reason we do that is that it kind of denotes that, hey, yeah, Dr. Carlos wrote this letter, it's his letter, he didn't actually type it out, it tells us who did, okay? If he typed it himself, if you typed your own letter, you don't put reference initials, okay? It's only if somebody other than the, the writer typed it, okay? Double space below that, okay, or if that's not there, double space below uh, the name there, is, could be what's called copy notation. Okay, so let's say that the letter was sent to someone other than the person who's listed as the, the recipient in the, in the address at the top. Okay, so for example, uh, maybe Dr. Crowther sent a letter, you got in trouble or something, sent a letter home to mom and dad, okay, um, about you, but he also sent a copy of the same letter to the superintendent, Dr. Cano, because he wanted to make sure that he had a copy of that letter, okay. So he would put, you would put at the bottom, C, tab over, and type the person's name that got a copy of the letter. That lets the person know, okay, that gets this letter, that yes, this letter is to you, it's written to you, but somebody else got a copy of it. Okay, it's called copy notation. And then another possible uh, part of this would be a double space below. If something else was enclosed in the envelope, okay, Let's say uh, you are purchasing something and you sent a check or you're maybe you're trying to get a refund uh, from a business or you're getting a refund and they're sending you a check with it, whatever, okay? You would put enclosure at the bottom of this, okay? Say enclosure or enclosures, there's more than one. You could also say attachment if something was stapled or clipped to the letter, okay? That lets the recipient know that, hey, I should be finding something else in this 